Welcome to Tama Talks, brought to you by the Torrance Art Museum Advocates. I'm Janine Madden, current president, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Today's talk will feature work currently on view at the Torrance Art Museum. The show closes Saturday, March 4th, 2023, so be sure to stop by if you're in the area. TAM hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., and it's located at 3320 Civic Center Drive in Torrance, California. Uh, because the TAM is a municipal museum, it's a program of the City of Torrance Cultural Arts Services Division of the Community Services Department. Admission to the museum is free, but donations are accepted and very much appreciated. You can find the art museum on the web at www.torrenceartmuseum.com. This discussion will be recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel, along with all of our previous TAMA talks. Uh, these can be accessed from our website, which is www.tamadvocates.com. I'm so happy to chat today with Brian Ida, whose work is featured in the main gallery at the TAM as part of the current Bridging the Pacific LA Art of the Japanese Diaspora exhibition. Brian's contribution to Bridging the Pacific show are two images from his series, Context, life-size portraits that relate historical events and documents to the lives of the subjects who are in some way connected to current times. The portraits examine a broad range of subjects, including racism, civil rights, human rights, and man's inhumanity toward man. The intent of the series is to portray individuals as the embodiment of strength and pride, standing defiantly in the face of oppression and fear by a power against them. With the current social and political environment and the recent acts that repeat past abuse and injustice, he is attempting to view historic events in the context of the current, excuse me, of the contemporary climate. Of special note is the portrait of his grandfather depicted as he was waiting to board a bus to the internment camps for Japanese Americans during World War II. This portrait and how it relates to what is happening now was the starting point for his series. He says, there is a common connection that is at once deeply personal and at the same time universal, which he hopes will inspire dialogue and further research on the viewer's behalf. Interestingly, Brian's education is in music, specifically electronic music composition. And so we are interested to hear about the transition from music to painting, and of course, about the photographs which inspired his work for the show. So welcome, Brian. I'm really excited to speak with you today. Thank you. Glad and to be, thank you. Thank you. And, and um, you can go ahead and share your screen now so we can see the uh, images. So the, 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 I started the series in like 2017. I started thinking about the series in 2016 when the elections were ramping up. And then in 2017, um, Trump was uh, trying to enforce the, or try and do the executive order for the Muslim ban. And he was tweeting a lot to try and justify that, the, the Muslim ban. And it, it just reminded me a lot of what my parents were going through. So I, so I just came up with the idea to do my neighbor, which I saw her, so they, would, they would go to temple on Saturday morning early. And she would go in a, I think it's called a niqab. That's the full face covering. So, and I just felt great empathy for her and what she was going through and kind of what my, parent, my parents went through and my grandparents went through. And, and so I just came up with the idea to render her using Trump's tweets. So that was the first one I did. And it, that one, first one took like three months. Can you see the image? I can see the image. So tell me a little bit about the medium and the composition. So I, I, I wanted to kind of have isolated, like a lot of white background and just really simple and just have the subject and, and change the idea of the word from, from these words of hatred and discrimination into a, a, a language of beauty, a visual language of beauty. So you're changing the word from, from a spoken word into a visual language. Um, so that was kind of the idea behind it. And that, the first one just, I can't, I just started, I just started 
basically writing and drawing. And the, the first one was almost life size, so it's five feet tall by three feet wide. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, that, so I rented that first one. That first one took like three months because the writing's really small. You can see the writing. Oh wow. Okay. So, you can see like the, 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 her robe is black, so it's like it's just word over word over word. It took a long time. I think it was fifteen hundred tweets, and there was some tweet. There are some tweaky tweets in there. Ryan, that is absolutely unbelievable. I had no idea because the images that you sent me, I thought maybe were done in colored pencil or a, another medium, but I had no idea it was the, the, the smallest pen you can you can buy. It's a micron 0.005. So it's just like mar it's, it's almost like a etching kind of like okay. really fine marks with that, but it's like five foot tall. Okay. That was the first one. And so I like that format, the five foot by 37 inch format. And, and I can't, uh, just thought about it and wanted to keep going with the series. So I, uh, so this image is a Dorothea Lang image from the National Archive. So her, her, she shot the Japanese internment during World War II, but her, her, um, images were initially hidden deep in the National Archive, like kind of hit, not not censored, but just kind of not available. Because back then you, had, you couldn't just go online to get them. Okay. They were hidden. And so the, the first show, I believe the first show, so they were hidden in the archive for a long time. And then I think the first show, I'm not sure, I'm not positive about this. I think the first show was in the 80s. And it was at the Smithsonian. They were kind of revealing, Ansel, Ansel Adams was uh, commissioned to, to, to Document the internment and Dorothea Langs was, was commissioned. And hers were, hers were hidden because she kind of depicted much more harsh reality. And Ansel depicted like baseball games and basketball games, kind of like American life behind the, behind barbed wire. Yeah. She depicted like great sadness and pain. Uh, as as, as she did style. with her other work as well. Yeah, as well. those are stuff. Those are those, are, those, are, those, are, those are she did. So this image of my my grandfather, my grandmother, and my dad, that's my dad. Um, so when they first went to the show in the Smithsonian, they walked in and they saw that image. Oh, and they were not told beforehand and they- No, didn't they didn't know. know. Oh my. They walked oh. in and saw, I think I think it's still up, I'm not sure, but I, I haven't been to the Smithsonian, so I don't know. But so they, they saw this image and um, I guess the whole, my whole father's side of the family knew about the image after that. Okay. So I didn't really do anything with it. I, I knew of it. So I I searched it out. No, my, I think my cousin sent it to me. And then I found it in the National Archives. Um, so I got, and the National Archives is a great resource. It's, it's free and you can, you can duplicate it or you can do whatever you want with the images in public domain, which is amazing. It is amazing considering so the, the amount of them. Resource. Yeah, there's like 1,500 images of the internment by Dorothea Lang and Ansel Adams, and she has her uh, dust bowl images in there that uh, you can grab and print them. Um, so we knew, I knew about this image, so I decided to take my grandfather and isolate my grandfather and do an image of my grandfather, because I, I never, never knew him. And then, he, I think he was, he didn't live, but about, about four or something, so I didn't really know him. He was sick. Um, so I, uh, just seeing his face and, and the, the, the time that it was captured, it was like, I had one of my grandfather. So I did the, uh, so, so this was the second image I did. What year was that? 2017. Oh, what year was the image taken? Oh, 42. 1942, About, okay. Yeah, it was, it was taken in San Francisco as they were heading into um, the bus station at, and then the, to take them to a, 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 like a horse racing track where they were in, put up in stables for like a, whatever till they till they built the internment camps. I think there was a while there in the, in the uh, temporary housing. Uh, no, it's not like housing; it's fucking horse stables. But so they, my my father and my grandfather's went. My grandparents went to. Mom went to Poston. My dad went to Utah. Yeah, I get my sometimes. Oh, so so they had to actually leave. Um, they had to actually leave California. 
Yeah, the the in the internment camps executive I, I use executive order nine six nine six six put the Japanese American Japanese anyone of Japanese ancestry, which is Japanese Americans and first generation Japanese, uh, away from the West Coast and into internment camps away from the West Coast. So they were in like Utah, Wyoming, Arizona, and the, the deserts. And one was in California with Manzo. Yeah, Manzo. That's what I was like thinking. Them. Right. Okay. But it was far away from the coast. They, they wanted them far away from the coast. Um, okay. It was a little submarine scare and invasion scare. So, so this image as well. Um, words. Yeah. So I, I, I rendered, so I rendered the, the my neighbor using Trump's tweets. And this one I used Executive Order 9066, which was the executive order signed by uh, FDR, Franco Barbarella, during World War II, after Pearl Harbor, to, to um, in, in turn, yeah, turn the Japanese Americans and make, make the military zones away from the West Coast and ban them from the West Coast. So I think, I'm not super clear on the history, but um, there was options before to leave the coast, and some some um, people of Japanese ancestry did leave the coast, and they didn't get interned. But they were like living in Midwest and, uh, and it's away from the. I'm not sure what the military area was. Oh, but oh, so parents, not not think, everyone had to go. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we. It's really interesting, actually. Just the. Um, just the amount of information we don't know about it. Like you said, even the images themselves were hidden so deep in the National Archives. So it's yeah. kind of that dirty little secret among many dirty little secrets that we don't necessarily want to. There's a lot, there's a lot of history I don't know. I mean, I just kind of, with all this, with all this, with the whole series, I just kind of did it, not as a historian, but as an artist making interpretations of something that affects a family so this was i mean i, did, I don't really study the internal so i can't say it but i know i know that there was an option to leave early because i talked to someone whose family did leave early before the internment for the forced internment and they just moved like i think they moved to like nebraska or something like that i see i see so basically they could you could have the option to move um instead of being moved yeah because they didn't intern the japanese from um, like new york or something just California, just the coast. Just the West Coast, yeah. The West Coast. Washington, Oregon, and California. Early on, too, is like the renderings are. So I've done 24 of them. Okay. For the past five years. It's been five, five years. And so the, the early ones are. They have a, like a rudimentary feel to it. Like they're kind of more refined. Now. They're, just, they're just better. I mean, obviously, they're better. I learned a lot of it because I was doing a lot of color work and going to black and white and learning value. I learned a lot from those pieces. Yes. Yeah. And so the darker areas are words on top of words on top of words. Yeah. So that's kind of blurring it and changing the, the meaning of the word from, like I said, from the, the document of discrimination into a visual language. So you can't really read the words anymore. I was just going to say, so it's not some, an image that you could decipher, except for maybe on the collar and yeah, in the, in the, light. the face. Yeah. In the light, in the light areas. It's, it's a, you can How see. large is this piece? Five, they're all, all the vertical ones are five feet tall for the life size. Okay. Yeah. I've been doing them so long that I actually did, got nerve damage in my arm from doing, doing too much work. Yeah. And do you just reach up or do you uh, use a stool or? Uh, everything. And do you do them vertically or uh, uh, laying flat? I start them flat just because it's easier to write that way. And then uh, as it gets more towards the middle of the image, I have to go to vertical. So that's that's why. Uh, okay. It's my, it's my hand. Amazing. Okay. Um, and uh, is this particular image in the show? No, this one's in the, this one's in I have another show at the Bisasse Museum in Santa Clara. So in Santa Clara. Is, um, okay. I have uh, 18 on view there right now. Okay. So all the I think all the verticals are there. Yeah, all the verticals are there. And then um, the, the, the show, the pieces of Tam are more recent ones. Actually, it's an interesting story with the, the 
the ones in my heart. So this image of my grandparents, my father, we knew about it. And I knew where to get it in the, in the National Archives. So I just searched it out and got it and printed it out and uh, made prints for my, my family. And I was searching through the National Archive for another piece that I wanted to do. And I was, because there's like 1,500 images. So I was like leafing through really quickly, just going boom, 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 trying to find an image that catches my eye. And I was leafing through and I was like, God, oh, that's what I was like, God. So I was just leafing through. And then I was like, he kept going, and like, God, that's what I got too. And I went all the way through. And then I went back. And I, I looked at that. I think it's my dad. Oh. So I confirmed it because you could see his hat, the goofy hat and his collar. Yes. I had, that's the way I had to confirm it because I didn't, I didn't know. We didn't, none, none, no one in the family knew about these other two images of my dad. So that's the image. Also, I'll share that. So that's the image. That's one of the images that I found in the National Archive uh, when I was searching for. Actually, I was searching for the image of the, of the Kamiko, who's the, the girl in the other piece in the Twins Army Zoom show, which is Virginia Silver. And so that's the hat you were referring to? Around yeah, yeah. So as, as, as I was glancing by, I was like, oh, that's my dad. It's not really like a face on. So it's like, you know. But that's and it. how old do you think he was in this photograph? 42, he was 17. Okay. So he, he went on to, he was interred into, um, internment camps and from the internment camps he enlisted in the army and he went on to serve in the military intelligence and in the um, learned to be an interpreter uh, interrogator imagine so served in the pacific theater which is there wasn't too many japanese americans in the pacific theater for obvious reasons wow and my uncle went on to serve in the 442 which was the highest decorated military unit in u.s history it was all Japanese Americans. They served. They they served in, in Europe exclusively, in Africa and Europe. Okay. So well, this have, image, I, this image is the one. Um, so taken by Dorothea Lang. Yeah. And this is the one that um, from which the image that you're including in the show was uh, inspired. A, yeah, that's the. One. Okay. So those, the, the two you just saw. Were, uh, and now, were, in, in your other uh, in your other shows, like the one in Santa Clara, did you do you always include the original photograph from which the image is taken? No, because a lot oh. of a lot of them are, are, are just photos I took, the reference of the, the people that I used. Um, okay. Mostly, most of most of the series is uh, contemporary people, like people I know or people that I've met through, and they they have interesting family histories, like Native American history or. LGBTQ. But all of the images are comprised of words. Yeah, yeah. I, so I researched documents that, re that re re reference the whatever event happened to that family. Um, like the um, Indian Removal Act from my, my friend Paul, whose uh, grandmother was was uh, Asabana tribe and the great, 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 great Northern Plains. Yes. So I did the Indian Removal Act of 1830. I used that document to render him to pay tribute to his grandmother. Still amazing. Just the transcription of the words, but not only the transcription of the words, but also that the use of those words to create. So the, the magnitude of the words, but also the use of them to create the image is still, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around that one. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to, like, you can look at it, and you look at it, think about it, and you think about history, and then you think about the family, and there's a lot, there's a lot into the, into the work, so it's, so, and there's so many different stories, that it. it's not just the internment, I did a lot of internment stuff, so I did a bunch of stuff for the Japanese American Museum, and it, 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 it directly affected my family, so that's kind of why I, a lot of emphasis on that was sure three or four pieces I did my uncle tribute to my uncle using my cousin um, so there's a little bit more of the internment just because that's that's my thing that's my story and then but i also do the holocaust and things like that. ah yeah and the stories okay. are like some of the stories are just heartbreaking and all the stories are heartbreaking but there's like the people that I render or the, the, the strength that comes out of them. They're, they're, they're the byproduct of the forging of, you know, 
family family history. Absolutely, absolutely. So when I studied music and studied the, the griots of West Africa, the, the Uruguay tribe, and they would have their 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 history is, is trans, transferred generation to generation, generation through musicians and music and storytelling and music. So it kind of you relate that idea too. So interesting. Do you have the Do you have the image of this that you used for the show? I have it, but it's with. Um... Yeah, I have it. Okay, good. And were they separated? Uh, was your father separated from his parents during this process? Initially, no, but he he like I said, he, he uh, enlisted in the army, so he did his own separation. Well, you know, the, I know, I know the Japanese even from the camps wanted to prove their loyalty, so that's why they, that's why they're like. That was the most. I see. Okay. Crazy unit, like they, they were. They they went. They they were. They were out to prove themselves. In, in sure, Europe. sure. Yeah. Sounds uh, very similar to Tuskegee Airmen. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Super brave and. Put yourself. Yeah, when you don't have anything to lose when the alternative yeah, is in turn. Then I guess. So. Life, yeah. Right. And so on this image, the the use of words appears to be more decipherable than perhaps the previous um Yeah, this, this is definitely image. a later one. You can see the render, it's rendered a lot better. It's, it's just cleaner. I think it's better. And this was an alien land law, which is one of the there's like three or four laws or executive orders that specifically discriminated against Asian or Japanese American Japanese. So alien land law was uh, they, they banned people of Japanese ancestry from leasing or owning land. That yes. 1913. I was going to say I think that that um, that uh, that's hits fairly close to home for Torrance because I, I know that there were a lot of um, Japanese Americans and Japanese descendants who had farms in Palos Verdes. Couldn't own them. They had to rent it through uh, white friends or some other back channel. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather had a lot of. He built a lot of equity and hotels and car dealerships. So when he when he was interred, that's my mom's my mom's side. He left it in the hands of a, his, his friend who was white who didn't get interred. So. Uh, he didn't manage it like my grandfather. My grandfather was a really good businessman, so he lost, kind of lost his ball. And were they able to deliver it back to them when the internment um, ended? Oh, well, yeah, but it was the businesses were not what they were. I'm not sure the exact story, but mm -hmm. yeah. it came back to some. But not, not. Plus, it's like you come back and to super racism because they just started the war. Japanese, so, so. Sure, exactly, exactly. And like you say in your um, biographical information, uh, we're seeing sort of a resurgence of it now after COVID. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to recognize that as a nation, we uh, have a really difficult time learning from our mistakes. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what this series is about. It's like, I don't want to preach or be political. So hopefully people will see it. Think it's kind of it takes a little bit of thinking. And the other piece, uh, the other piece that you have in the show, uh, is the young woman also a relative? No, she was. Um, I just wanted to do a portrait. I didn't want to do my family again, so I, I just okay. mine my duty is. Uh, Archive and so I found her and I thought her face was compelling as she was looking down and was super protecting the, the luggage and it was just, it was like the worst, pretty much the worst day of her life. I mean, she's probably 10, 8, I don't know how she's very young. She's like almost the worst day ever. Going to jail for no reason. This is the original image of the feeling. Ah, oh, wow. When I don't uh, think that's her name. I think that's the I don't think that's her name on the back. I think her name Akiyama. is Akiyama. Okay. Keep a guide. Keep 
And just the fact that sure. she she herself is tagged yeah. Uh, yeah. along with all of her belongings yeah. is just yeah. so uh, I I really don't have any words to describe like the emotional impact of seeing the tag hanging from her. So I isolated her and uh, took her little out of the back. I just wanted it to be a simple black and white. Yes. You can see just the top of the tag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was doing, I did think I did executive order 906. I did that executive order 906 with a couple of them. Okay, so same, uh, so the same document. Yeah, because the, the, the series, the real series is the vertical. So this is kind of an offshoot. For okay. I did this specifically for Tam. And so uh, did you not use spaces? Did, was it just words? strung together yeah i just crammed everything together you can read it i mean i don't put spaces in there because it's like i don't have to fill them in later anyway sure and so this one was actually done left handed because i damaged i damaged pretty badly my arm my got nerve damage in my arm my right arm from doing these i've done 22 of them so wow about a year ago i had got nerve damage in my arm shape so i, I had to start working left-handed so this one was done left handed oh. You're funny. I had to start working left-handed as if I could just switch. <laughs> it was kind of hard, but yes, it's, it's just it's just much more intentional and slow. So, but it's, and it's, interestingly, uh, the her she looks, you know, she still looks contemplative and sad, but less so without all of the um, materials behind her. So in isolation, it's not as heart wrenching. Yeah. You know, she looks like she might, particularly the wisps of hair. Yeah. I have to say, it's very Dorothea Lang esque. Huh. <laughs> this image is. You know, particularly that Dust Bowl image where the where the mom's oh, right. hair is, yeah, is yeah, really yeah. in her face a lot. Yeah, for long. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And this piece is at the TAM. Yeah, that piece with the original photograph. Okay, absolutely, uh, absolutely amazing. And now you were saying with the um, with the nerve damage. So, do you find uh, that you are going to pursue a, a different? I mean, these are just so powerful. They they really transcend the actual image. Uh, do you find that you're going to move now into another? kind of um, mark making that is expresses yourself in a different way that's less uh, destructive on your body? Um, I'm, I'm definitely taking a break from the series for a while because I've done, I have shows worth. And, uh, but I've, I've been, I'm still painting. So while I was doing the series, I was to take a break from the, the, the rigor of these pieces, I would paint so I, I've still been painting a little bit just not like full schedule like two shows a year type, uh, showing and are your paintings of a uh, do your paintings convey a similar message or really are they just kind of a, a break from that uh, I do like an environmental series like a nature series so I do trees and then uh, an endangered species ah oh my goodness okay <laughs> totally different I, I go and I go and, I go Totally to different different tracks. I just, I is this to... your is this your first time showing at the TAM or have you shown before? Uh, I've shown in like group shows. Okay, at the at the Torrance Art Museum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, absolutely amazing. I think that um, one of the things that I really enjoy about doing these TAMA talks is that I'm I'm really able to get that backstory that a label just has no way of conveying. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hope is really good about embedding a QR code to maybe your website and that sort of thing. I'm not sure if that that she's done that with this show, but um, hearing about the inspiration uh, in Uncivil War, I'm so sorry, I can't recall the artist's name, but one of the gentlemen, one of the artists that I had interviewed also used words, very sort of Basquiat-esque though, okay. uh, words and um, and with historical significance to them as well, but absolutely nothing like like your depictions of work. Yeah, different. That's kind very of- Very much so. I, I definitely seek out being different, innovation, 
and that's like my whole thing is i didn't when i was doing music i didn't listen to much music that's probably why i was so bad at it <laughs> that's why it's so hard at it because i didn't i didn't i didn't want to have any influence i just wanted to figure out things by myself and i think painting's a lot easier to do that with so i, I kind of do that myself in painting too and, and, and do you um so you were saying interestingly one of the things that max um does when he's painting is he says he always has music playing uh sort of as an inspiration to him as he's painting and you were interestingly saying that you don't you've sort of stopped listening to music yeah i can't as a, as a trained musician you kind of you're trained to anticipate and hear chord progressions and melodies where they're going, and time signature changes, and kind of the drama of music. So you, yes. you listen to it much more deeply. So I, it just, it's just, it's just a total distraction. So I, I listen to a lot of people talking, like podcasts and, and books on tape. Okay. Because I, I can tune that out. I can't tune out music. I, sure. like, I, I listen to music. Wow, that that is uh, amazing. I did a lot of it. I did. I analyzed uh, Mozart's Jupiter Symphony, 41st oh, Symphony. Oh, yes, yes. I broke, that down. I broke that down note for note for though. I think that was a, what I was doing for a year. Oh. At music. And then I studied also electronic music and sound design. I, I think that one of the things about anything actually, you know, is that the more you are, when the more you get down in the weeds of it, the more hypersensitive you are to all of the nuances of it. And you yeah. right. can be incredibly yeah. distracting from its original intention. Yeah, it's like a painter looks at paintings different. Yes, exactly, exactly. For, for the first 15 years of painting, I didn't look at other paintings. I, I, I never looked at it. I just couldn't look. I didn't want to have any ideas coming in, except for, for me figuring yeah. out my own stupid way. And that's my next question. So did you have, I mean, were, was there any inspiration uh, for the kind of, like, how did you come up with the idea of incorporating words to create images? It popped in my head. Really? Yeah. That's a, like my first, when I start series, like I started a series of hard edge ge ge geometric cities. One just, I was doing like this free form kind of super color abstraction. I, kind of, I think I was doing flowers. I was doing these freeform flowers, like really colorful, vibrant, gestural. And then this just this thing came in, it's like I taped the edges and hard edge and I, uh, and I just switched. It's like that, it was such an inspirational idea. And just like, boom, wow, that's a really cool idea. And I just layered the epoxy layers with paint in them. So there's like a physical separation between the, the layers. But just and, self uh, self inspired. Yeah, it just came. I just did it. Wow, that is just absolutely amazing. Where will these pieces go after Tam? Will are they due to be in another show? Uh, hopefully. Okay. Well, the Tam pieces. Well, I, I, I have the solo show at the Dissasse that runs through June, so I want to move that show. Hopefully, somewhere. I don't know. Okay, and where where is that again? Dissasse Museum on Santa Clara University. Oh, it's Santa Clara. Okay. It's a teaching museum and it's a California history museum. Yes, it's an extraordinary campus. So Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so very much. I really appreciate you spending the time. And Thanks. like I said, what I'll do, uh, let me finish that. I really appreciate you spending the time. And um, we will remind folks that the show is up until Saturday. So where yeah. are we today? Is today Thursday? So I'll try and get this all up onto the YouTube channel and um, people at least will be able to uh, hear your, you know, your, your background information about it. Yeah. And I thank you so much.